A momentous and unforgettable reception took place in New York, paying tribute to senior Congressman James Clyburn of the Democratic Party. Known as one of the living legends of the Democratic Party, Congressman Clyburn was honored for his significant contributions. It is anticipated that just as Congressman Clyburn played a pivotal role in President Joe Biden's success, he will also play a crucial role in reclaiming the Democrats' lead in the House of Representatives during the upcoming congressional election and support Congressman Hakeem Jeffries in becoming the Speaker. The honoring ceremony for Congressman James Clyburn was held at the residence of former senior Congressman Ed Towns, a prominent leader within the Democratic Party, in Queens, New York. Dr. Majhar Malik and his daughter Sadia Malik co-hosted the reception with the presence of distinguished individuals from New York City, including Dr. Inam ul Haq, Fakhira Haq, Saqib Khan and Syed Gilani. Prominent figures such as Congressman Gregory Meeks, New York State Attorney General Letitia James, Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez and Hajel Duke alongside Democratic Party representatives and influential personalities from various walks of life, participated in the event. Upon Congressman Jim Clyburn's arrival from South Carolina, he was warmly welcomed by Ed Towns, Sadia Malik, Darrell Towns, Gwen Towns and others. Congressman Clyburn took the time to individually meet and express gratitude to the attendees for their hospitality and warm reception. During the ceremony, Dr. Sadia Malik presented Congressman Jim Clyburn with the famous Chitrali hat on behalf of the Pakistani-American community, while renowned artist Mark Liebman presented his artwork. We are representing the Pakistani Civic Association the Pakistani uh, community, and we are representing Staten Island. Our friendships go very deep with the Congressman Towns and his family, and we are truly honored uh, that Congressman Clyburn has come to Brooklyn. And in the few uh, episodes that I have experienced with meeting with the Congressman, I want to tell you that he has a very humble heart and he has a fairness when he speaks. And I wish that tonight that all of us could listen and go back and tell five of our family members about his unique quality. He is the kingmaker. He has taken risks that nobody has taken. And we wish that all of our generations could follow Congressman Ed Towns and Sadia Malik extended their warm welcome to Congressman Clyburn, expressing their appreciation for his presence in New York and emphasizing the Democratic Party's anticipation of his continued political impact in the future. Congressman Gregory Meeks, New York State Attorney General Letitia James, Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez and other speakers addressed the audience, affirming their confidence in the Democratic Party's ability to achieve its goals under the leadership of Congressman Clyburn. They highlighted his instrumental role in President Biden's success during the 2018 presidential election and stressed that he will play a pivotal part in restoring the Democratic majority in the House of Representatives. One who's legendary, who has made a difference in the United States' history, and when you think about it, where would we have been going through all that we went through over the last four years, particularly going through COVID and the economic times that we had, if that other guy that is going to jail soon was still president, <laughs> but it was one man's vision to make sure that that did not happen. People talk about a leader. He had the vision, knew how to turn it around and almost single-handedly made sure that this other guy was not elected president. And we had a man that in knows people is gentle, understands and who I believe history is going to show did a heck of a job doing such of some of the most difficult times. But we have this gentleman, James, James E. Clyburn, for, to thank for that happening. And when we think about all that's going on right now, also, I know that and I think that the leader, he told me he was going to get here. He was in Chicago trying to get on a plane to get here so he'd be here. But I will say this, you know, 
about this man right here. You know, we had this commercial when E.F. Hutton speaks, everyone else signed. When Jim Clyburn is standing up before the Queen's Democratic uh, Caucus, if there's talking, he stops. Because everybody know wisdom is about to come out of his mouth. When Congressman Kleinburn is on the television, I stop and I listen um, because I know and everyone here knows how you helped save our democracy by your leadership, not just for supporting President Biden, but throughout the years. And so it's a tremendous honor for me today to meet you in, in, in uh, person, but for us to acknowledge as forcefully as Congressman Meeks did that you're a history maker and you're a man that we will continue to make sure our young people learn about and recognize and give you flowers while you're still in power because um, what you've done for this country, there's only a handful of people in the history of this country that have made such a mark on our democracy. I, I told Congressman Meeks that a long time ago and he told me he was gonna tell you. Um, so. <laughs> So as the, um, and of course it's great to see the former mayor of Hempstead, my dancing partner at the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus. How are you, sir? <laughs> so, um, and it's also important to know that we, it's really critically important that we salute you for all that you have done. Um, uh, again, standing up for healthcare, on, the countless, on, on, on behalf of the countless number of individuals that are represented in the state of New York who are living under poverty. Thank you for what you did during COVID for saving so many lives. Um, thank you for, uh, again, standing up and selecting uh, President Biden. You put him in place, as well as Vice President Harris. And I also know that you're responsible for Jamie Harrison, who's the head of the Democratic Party as well. You do it all. You do it all. Hey, Miss Hazel. Hey, Mama Dukes. How are you, love? Uh, you do it all, and that's why, you know, I, whenever you're on MSNBC, I turn the TV up and tell everybody to be quiet, because you speak truth to power, and you truly are an inspiration and someone who I admire greatly. Former Congressman Ed Towns introduced Congressman Jim Clyburn at the event, expressing his privilege to have served alongside him in the U.S. Congress. Towns acknowledged Clyburn's exceptional journey in politics, marked by continuous accomplishments and contributions. I'm going to be brief in terms of introducing uh, uh, Honoree because I'm going to associate myself with uh, uh, attorney, I mean, the district attorney, and then I'm going to associate myself with Greg Meeks' remarks, and I'm going to associate myself with uh, Crystal Peoples' remarks, and I mean, all that, and that's part of my introduction of Jim. But let me just say the reason I'm going to be brief is that in 1955, in Niagara Falls, New York, uh, my aunt was very involved in New Hope Baptist Church, and Martin Luther King was coming to be the speaker. And the way she finagled somewhere or another and arranged for her <laughs> nephew to be, to be able to introduce Dr. Martin Luther King. I guess she'd made a nice contribution or something. I'm not sure what happened. But anyway, I had this opportunity. And I went and I started researching, went to the library, and I got all, I read, got, found out who his third grade teacher was, everything. I just got up and that Sunday, and I introduced Dr. Martin Luther King. Oh, did I introduce him? I went, I told him about when, what hospital he was born in. And I, went on, I just went all the way through. And, and the young people in the audience, they were applauding me. And I thought that, that meant continue. You know, I was just going on and on. You know, and, and, uh, and so finally, now it's time for Dr. King to get up. And Dr. King says uh, to Reverend Whitaker, he said, we are going to make history in this church today. And everybody sort of looked around. We're making history. He said, the first time that the introduction is going to be longer than the speech <laughs> so i don't want to i don't want to be guilty of that today but i want to sort of say a couple of things about my good friend uh, jim clyburn jim clyburn represents the sixth district in south carolina yeah jim clyburn came to congress as a freshman and became president of the freshman class he came in a hurry he was he was, he was rushing and then later on jim clyburn became Chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus. Jim was in a hurry. And then, then later on, Jim became the whip, the f second man of color to become the whip in the United States House of Representatives. Jim was in a hurry. <laughs> and now, now Jim is, some of you might not know, 
is vice chair of the Democratic Party in the United States House of Representatives. And then when you talk to the political experts, you know, all these guys, they will say to you in, that the only reason that Joe Biden became president of the United States is because of Jim Clyburn. That's a fact. They would say, they, they would tell you that. They would tell you that over and over again. Yes. Well, let me just conclude by saying, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what's going to happen when they get those five seats back and Jim Clyburn and, 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 and Hakeem Jeffries has been running the United States House of Representatives. Look out! Look out! No doubt about it. I can't wait! In his response, Congressman Jim Clyburn expressed gratitude to Ed Towns, Sadia Malik, and others for the honor and warm welcome in New York. Addressing the audience, he affirmed that not only will they secure victory in the upcoming presidential elections as they did in 2018 but also regain the majority in the House of Representatives, making history by electing Congressman Hakeem Jeffries as Speaker. Congressman Clyburn urged New Yorkers to secure more seats from New York State in the next congressional election. A lot of people don't know. But before I got elected to Congress back in 1992, there were eight African Americans to serve in Congress from South Carolina. Eight. I stand on their shoulders. And I'm doing this book because I want everybody to once and for all know that we all stand on the shoulders of others, no matter who you may think you are or what you may think you are, you're standing on some shoulders. And many of you have made significant successes here, but you didn't get here alone. You got here because somebody made some real sacrifices to get you in position to take advantage of whatever opportunities may have presented themselves. And I try every day to honor all of that. Furthermore, Congressman Jim Clyburn shed light on the history and contributions of the black community in America, emphasizing their potential to lead the country and the nation forward. Congressman Clyburn delivered a special message for the Pakistani-American community, expressing his appreciation and gratitude. I am so pleased to be standing here this evening uh, with these great representatives of the Pakistani community. They demonstrate, not just with their lives, but with their service, uh, what it means to be an American. It doesn't matter where you were born, or how you got here. What matters is how you commit to what this country is all about and conduct yourselves in such a way uh, that will benefit uh, and the country will benefit from your presence. And so congratulations to all of those in the Pakistani community who have done so much uh, in so many fields to make this country a better place. And hopefully we can all work together as we continue our pursuit of a more perfect union. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.